This series between the Illini and Indiana has always featured high-scoring, run-and-gun type basketball, but if Illinois coach Barto has his way tonight, the Illini will slow it down and hope to keep the high-scoring Hoosiers from their usual offensive effectiveness. Indiana fresh from Saturday's 104-71 victory over Purdue. That's the same Purdue team that beat Illinois 86-67 a week and a half ago. Carmichael at the center jump, and Indiana's in control. Benson is number 54. Green and May at the forwards. Quinn Buckner in control out front, along with Bobby Wilkerson, his running mate at guard, and the Illini in the zone. 2-1-2 right now. The Hoosiers looking from the outside, trying to get it in, and it's taken away. And a nice defensive effort by the Illini, and Nate Williams comes down with it. No score in the ball game. We've just gotten underway. This is the 100th game for Coach Bobby Knight as coach of the Indiana Hoosiers, and the tremendous success that he's had here is just phenomenal. Rick Schmidt, Mike Washington. And the Illini break on top as Mike Washington getting only his third start of the year responds with the first basket of the ball game. Wilkerson is 20. This is Green. He's lost 15 pounds in the last week and a half because of the flu. But he's starting here tonight. Didn't play at all against Purdue. He's a very valuable member. May looking for inside help. Can't get it. Back out to Wilkerson. Long pass to Benson, and the turnover is out of bounds. It'll be awarded the, uh, to the Illini. Tom, that's two mistakes Indiana has made uh, both times that they've come down uh, the floor with the ball. And, of course, this is going to be our key, too. And I'm sure they're going to put the pressure on us uh, down deep. They're doing that right now, but Nate Williams nicely gets it across the line against Buckner. Picked up by Green. Too much height there for Williams, so he gets it back out. Washington is number 54. That's Otho Tucker. He was in bed with the flu a good part of last week, but he's going to try to play here tonight. The offensive foul is called on Otho Tucker. Gene Barto comes off the Illini bench, to, looks at the official with a very questioning uh, appearance on his face that says not a word. Two to nothing, Illinois. We played a minute and a half. The Hoosiers averaging over 90 points a ball game. May. Wilkerson. Back to May. Buckner in the middle. Knocked away. And Indiana recovers. Hoosiers want to get it inside to the big guys. The line eye zone so far really has been bottled up. Ball knocked out of bounds by Wilkerson. It'll be the Illini ball. Hoosiers missed the shot and a tip. Tom Carmichael, who had such a beautiful ball game, probably the best of his collegiate career, Saturday against Ohio State. Washington to Carmichael moving on the big guy. Beautiful shot, uh, and they cleared it out and gave Tom plenty of room to hook the ball. Illinois four, Indiana nothing. The Hoosiers, believe it or not, have not scored in two and a half minutes. And a foul is called on Carmichael. Second team foul on the Illini. Indiana has yet to commit a personal foul. Four to nothing, Illinois, on baskets by Washington and Carmichael. Three-second violation on Indiana. That's their third turnover. Bobby third. Knight may have apoplexy here if they keep doing that. Well, Tom, there's no question Illinois wants to control the ball game. That's why they're using that zone defense. And then they're going to be a little more deliberate as they come down the floor. Coach Bartow told us Saturday on the plane ride coming back from Columbus that he wanted Carmichael to bring Benson far from the basket and so far he's been doing that. Five seconds, the Illini do not get it inbound, so there's a turnover giving the ball back to the Hoosiers. Well, and this is what Indiana's noted for. Uh, Tom, they play that real tight man-to-man uh, -man defense. Now this crowd in the building here that seems to go halfway to heaven starting to set up a chant. Carmichael, Williams, knocked away nicely by Quinn Buckner. It'll be Illinois ball. 
The Illini had the fast break going, but a little bit slow on the outlet pass by the time Carmichael caught up to it. Buckner caught up to Williams. Also Tucker, I'm sure he'll be running in under the basket to use his height just like that and misses the layup. Too bad, Otho. May travels. And would you believe it, we played three and a half minutes, folks, and Indiana hadn't scored. It's a ball club that's averaging over 90 points a game. Illinois four, Indiana nothing. The Illinois bench right in front of us. Greg Schmidt way out, helping out, out front. And an offensive foul is called on Mike Washington. Well, that's too bad. Well, the sad part about it, the Washington got bumped into the Indiana player, and this is what always hurts. So here comes Indiana, Wilkerson, Green, looking inside. Quinn Buckner. And a jump ball. Green drove for the hook. He thought he got fouled. But a jump ball was called between Green and looks like Tom Carmichael will move in there. They say Green has lost 15 pounds with that flu in the last week and a half, and they think he's more mobile because of the loss of the weight. Benson on a hook. Rebound, Wilkerson. That's the first basket by Indiana, and it comes with 16 minutes to play in the first half. So we played four minutes, and they had him shut out. Offensive foul is called on Nate Williams. And that happened right in front of the Illinois bench. It happened right here in front of us, I tell you. Well, the whole Illinois bench came up, and Coach Barto said, quiet, boys. Uh, they're too close to us. We might get a technical, and we can't afford that this early. May, he's a good shot. Well, and Tom, you notice they, they try to work that ball in around the key, down in deep. Uh, and they don't take that outside shot. Four to four at a tie ball game. We played four and a half minutes, and the jump ball has severe defensive pressure applied to Otho Tucker. We've got timeout in the first half of play with a score, Illinois four, Indiana four. Is it mine? Which which one? Is that better? Is that better? How's that? How's that? Okay. Coach Barto said he wanted to slow the action of this ball game down, and he certainly does that. We've played four and a half minutes, and the Illini and the Hoosiers are tied. Two baskets apiece. Jump ball after the timeout. Rick Schmidt. Nice drive by Rick Schmidt. Scott May on defense could do nothing about it. That's Schmidt's first basket. The Illini still in the zone, leading 6-4. Vincent inside, knocked away, and out of bounds, off. Wilkerson, it'll be Illinois ball, and they'll apply the pressure. Right here, here. Here comes the press, right here, Tom. Carmichael down, helping to bring it up. Better hurry. Now they got two on two. Mike Washington. And a foul on Benson, too. So we get the ball out of bounds. Count the basket by Washington. That's his second bucket of the game. The Illini leading by four, eight to four. 
Give the foul to Benson. That's his first in the first team foul on Indiana. The Illini now with a chance to go up by six points. Offensive foul on Otho Tucker. Fifth team foul on the Illini and the second personal on Tucker. So the Illini getting themselves in foul trouble, Gene, right away. Yeah, this hurts. Uh... Illinois still in the zone. Benson moves inside. And when that guy who measures 6'10 in height gets anywhere near the basket, it's tough. Buckner knocked it away from Schmidt, but Carmichael recovered. <laughs> Nate Williams driving on Wilkerson. Washington whistle blows. And somebody's got it's a foul on Green on 34. He was hanging on. On 20, then. Wilkerson. Really makes it tough because the players, because of the new rules, don't have to hold up their hands, so you really have to wait. Williams, nice jumper by Nate, and the Illini lead 10-6, to 14-19 to play first half. Illinois with the inspiring victory against Ohio State. Washington goes up for the block, but I think he may have fouled Benson. He did. Second foul on Washington, sixth team foul on Illinois. We haven't even played six minutes, and the Illini are within one foul of putting Indiana into one of the bonus. And boy, I'll tell you, they are tremendous free throw shooters when you look up and down their statistics. Benson's at the line, and as a free throw shooter, he's a 74 percenter. Illinois leading by two, 10 to eight. Wilkerson on Tucker. Illini needs some help. Now they got two on two. Can't move it in fast enough, so they'll take it back out. Rick Schmidt. Benson on the rebound, and here comes Buckner. Give the basket to Buckner and tie your ball game at 10. The Indiana crowd, a little bit excited about the fast break, executed very nicely by Indiana. Of course, Ed Benson really, he just throws it out, and Buckner goes. Foul is on Green underneath. First foul on Green, 13 foul on Indiana. And the way this is shaping up, they're going to call a lot of fouls in this ball. Game. Well, they have to, Tom. Uh, there's a lot of action, big, and particularly when you got the big men out there. The Illini throw it away. Nate Williams cannot hold it. Another costly turnover, and the Hoosiers now with a chance to take their first lead of the ball game. Win Buckner comes out of there, but. May gets the rebound, and Quinn's going to take it again. No, he's going to pass to May. And May's going to try it again. A tremendous individual effort by May. Green knocks it away from Williams on the throw-in, but he gets it off to Otho Tucker. The line are kind of bound up trying to get that ball across, and it'll be Indiana ball because Illinois did not get it across in 10 seconds. So Illinois now trailing by two, 12.53 to play first half. They've lost their composure the last couple of times. To make matters worse now, the band's going to play a little two. On the rebound, the foul is on Scott May of Indiana. First foul on May, fourth team foul on Indiana. Substitution coming in for the Illini. Is Howie Johnson. The Marshall sophomore comes in and Otho sits down. He's a little bit weary, Gene. I know you've been trying to recover from the flu and it takes a while. You just can't get out there and uh, go at full tilt. Well, that's right, Tom, and, and particularly to, to run like that. And I'm sure with the cold in his system, it's hard for him to breathe. And this is, this is a good time to get him out there and give him a, give him a rest. 
Now it's thrown away. Indiana comes back on the attack. Wilkerson, Benson, moving inside. Six points for Benson. Indiana with its biggest lead is now 14 to 10. Substitution of the ball game for Indiana is number 31, John Laskowski. He replaces Wilkerson. So you have now basically only one true guard in the Indiana lineup. That's Quinn Buckner, and he commits a personal foul. Laskowski at 6'5", can play either guard or forward. Green, May, Benson, and Buckner, along with Laskowski. Indiana now with five players, all having one foul and five team fouls. 12.20 to play first half, and the Hoosiers leading by four, 14 to 10, and Carmichael having troubles. Rick Schmidt. Green falls down, nothing is called. Pretty good fake on part of Green, and Quinn Buckner takes it right away. From Rick Schmidt. Boy, is he a valuable defensive man. Something is called before the shot a foul on Howie Johnson. Seventh team foul on the Illini. I think it might be a nice time to call timeout for Coach Barto. Things are starting to get away, and he does that with timeout. It's Indiana 14, Illinois 10. Standing room only crowd at the assembly hall in Bloomington, Indiana. About uh, eight minutes before this ball game started, looked as if there may be some no shows as they had a few empty seats, but Gene, they filled in, and now they're standing all the way around. I expect they must have at least 18,000 people in there. Yeah, they have a pretty good crowd, Tom. And they make a lot of noise, too. So at the line is Quinn Buckner, number 21. You remember him at Thornridge. Free throw, a little bit short. And had enough English on it to bounce it in the hoop. They're in the one and bonus. He'll get it now. Indiana by 5, 15, 10, 12, 05 left. First half. This is his second. Benson tips, and Carmichael comes down with it. Big Benson at 6, 10. He really jumped. Well, and of course, he's a year older, too. Uh, Tommy played last year as a freshman. He's got that year's experience. But see this defense, how they force us way out, and they're making it tough on us. Everything we get, we're going to have to work for. And the foul is called underneath. It's on Indiana. It'll either be on Laskowski or Scott May. It's on May. That's two on May. 16 foul on Indiana. 11.42 to play in the first half. The Hoosiers already on the one and bonus, and the Illini one foul from it. This could turn into a free throw shooting contest. Inside to Washington, and he got fouled. Fouled by 34. Steve Green got him. That is the second foul on Green, seventh team foul on Indiana. Wilkerson coming back into the ballgame for the Hoosiers. He'll replace Green. Steve Green's got the same problem Otho Tucker has, trying to play after recovering from the flu. He's obviously not up to his uh, super performances of past days. Washington at the line, one in bonus. He'll get another, the Illini to within four, 15-11. Good shot of the junior college transfer there in your picture. He's got them both. Washington in the ball game, the Illini's leading scorer with six points. 
Quinn Buckner throws that one into the first row of the band. Well, they're trying to hit Benson deep. Uh, of course, it's all timing. It's a tough play. Indiana always makes a lot of turnovers. Washington's shot is no good, and Rick Schmidt fouls Wilkerson on the rebound. Yeah, Rick went over the top of him then. Uh, Indiana player at the inside position. First foul on Schmidt. Washington has two. Tucker has two. Indiana May with two. And Green with two. This is a one and bonus. Wilkerson at the line. You get the bonus. Wilkerson is a 65% free throw shooter. Bobby Knight runs a lot of players in and out of this lineup. Carmichael to Williams, and Buckner stays down to give him some static, and he takes it away from him. And the foul is called on Nate Williams. Quinn Buckner can play on my ball club if he never scores a point. His defensive ability is something to behold. He really, really plays defense the way it's supposed to be. Well, he's got those quick hands, and I tell you, he's such a versatile athlete, Tom. You know, he played football and basketball a year ago. He's always working. But he doesn't get the first of the bonus free throw situation, so the Illini now have a chance to cut it to two. Howie Johnson was all alone, but Nate Williams didn't see him. Inside to Washington on a nice move. And the Illini pulled it within two. It's Indiana 16, Illinois 14. 10.53 to play, first half. Laskowski, Benson, Schmidt, and a jump ball. Rick Schmidt at 6'6", will jump against Benson at 6'10". So the Illini better protect the hoop, and they're going to do that. They, they got uh, three guys inside between Indiana and the basket. Quinn Buckner. 18 to 14, Indiana by four. Buckner has five points. Benson has six as their leading score. Mike Washington has eight for Illinois. The light eye with the pressure defense of Indiana having to start their plays about 12 feet further out than they'd like. Nate Williams on the drive and a nice jump shot. He now has four points. Well, and I tell you, I'm really encouraged to see Nate hitting like that from the outside. Indiana by two, 18-16. This is Laskowski. May back to Laskowski. He'll shoot it. It's long, but Benson, or rather Buckner on the rebound, the tip by May is no good. Indiana's still attacking it. The shot out of the corner by Wilkerson is good, and the foul is on Rick Schmidt. Well, Wilkerson comes to the line for the free throw. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. That is the second personal foul on Schmidt. Well, the thing about that, they play volleyball with it, Tom. They keep it up there until they finally got it in. Wilkerson misses the free throw. May rebounds it. And three-second violation on the Hoosiers. Indiana 20, Illinois 16. Illini moving it down against Buckner. Williams across the timeline. Carmichael on a nice rebound. And he got position on the inside of Benson. Well, that, that's just plain old hustle, Tom. He went to the board real hard. Indiana 20, Illinois 18. Illini hanging tough. That's about all you can hope for right now. And let's see how the second half develops. Let's just hang close. Rick Schmidt on the rebound on the missed shot by Laskowski. Well, Laskowski's not bashful. He'll shoot from any place. Inside, knocked away, and Wilkerson fouls Schmidt. We're in the one and one now. Both teams at the one and bonus. Nine minutes and one second to play in the first half, and Schmidt, if he makes them both, can pull the Illini even. 
team has been tied twice. The Illini led in the early going. Indiana's led for the last four or five minutes. Schmidt will get the bonus. Rick is an 85% free throw shooter. Tie ball game, 20 all. Schmidt has four points. Buckner brings it down. Wilkerson is his teammate at guard. Laskowski shoots again. Tipped out, and Howie Johnson picks it off the deck. The Illini have it with a chance to go ahead. Williams looks at Coach Barto and says, what do I do? And the coach calls the play. Laskowski almost intercepts. And Laskowski knocks it away. And finally makes his basket. Laskowski, his first basket of the game, and Indiana on the steal has a two-point lead. That's too bad. Well, they double-team you out there when they get you isolated, Tom, and it makes it tough. Uh, they always get that good defensive balance on you. Howie Johnson is playing at guard, and the ball is thrown away. Schmidt can't handle it. Buckner's got it. Carmichael knocks it away to Washington, and Schmidt is out in front. The Illini have tied it up on the breakaway by Schmidt. And Tom Carmichael made that happen, knocking it away from Buckner. Scott May. Indiana 24, Illinois 22, 7.37 to play. First half. Schmidt driving for the hoop, and boy, is he tied up. Ball's knocked away. Buckner throws it away. Quinn Buckner throws it away. Brad Farnham's coming into the ballgame for Illinois. Otho Tucker's coming in. All the Illini coaches up off the sidelines. Schmidt comes out. He's going to take a rest. Rick uh, having a little trouble getting started. Let's see now. We've got Farnham, who's in to shake things up defensively, along with Carmichael, Tucker, Washington, and Williams for Illinois. Green is back in for Indiana. And Quinn Buckner sits down. Otho Tucker. Oh. A rebound basket is by Washington. That was good position, and uh, the way that ball was rolling around. Washington has 10 points in this game, and we have tied at 24. Scott May comes out of there. Tom Carmichael and the Illini with a chance to take the lead. 6.33 to play first half. We're tied at 24. Tucker better get rid of that. Washington, who's the Illinois leading scorer with 10 points. Carmichael driving on May, but he won't let him inside. Washington on a nice pass inside, knocked away by Steve Green on a good defensive effort. You know, Tom, whenever you think you're free against them, somebody shows up from nowhere. They are really quick. The Illini hanging tough. They're tied. Six minutes to play in the first half. Nate Williams sets it up a little bit too hard. Knocked out of bounds. And it'll be Indiana ball. So here come the Hoosiers. Green is guarded by Farnham. Inside to Green, knocked away, nothing's called. Oh, I don't know, Laskowski takes the shot, tipped by Buckner, no good. Carmichael rebounds, and I think he got hacked. <laughs> Foul on Green, that's his third, and he's going to come out of the ball game. Tom End of the ball game is Abernathy. Tom Abernathy. Benson comes out, he's going to take a rest. 
Mike Washington come out. He's done a super job in there for us, Tom. That's a funny move by Bobby Knight. I thought he was going to take out Green. He took out Benson. So he's going to let Green play with three fouls. Abernathy replaces Benson. The big guy's out of there. Carmichael misses. The Illini with a chance to take the lead. Schmitz back in for Illinois. He replaces Washington. He sits down with those 10 points. Scott May. Indiana shooting over the zone now. Leading by two, 26-24, 5.20 to play. And the Illini throw it away. Well, and this is what you have to be careful of. They come down, get the basket, they go out to a hit, and they force us into that uh, mistake right quick. This is Green. Oh, he hits the back of the backboard and also takes it off. Nice move by Otho, but Laskowski recovers defensively. Tucker's playing forward and travels. Coach Barto says, uh, you know he didn't do it, ref. That's all he said. You know he didn't do it. Indiana 26, Illinois 24. Wilkerson. Long jumper, and over the top, I think a foul is going to be called on Indiana. They were coming over the top pretty good. Should be on Benson, because uh, he's so big, Tom, he doesn't realize there was a smaller man under him. It is on Benson. That's his second. Green has three, Wilkerson two, Benson two, and May two. For Illinois, they got a whole slew of guys at two. Schmidt, Washington. Tucker Williams. Carmichael at the line with a one and bonus and a chance to tie. That's the second straight one and bonus situation. Bobby Knight wants a timeout. He's disgusted and he kicks the scores table and almost knocks the equipment down. It's timeout with a score. Indiana 26, Illinois 24. in control. Bobby Knight is not in control of himself. He is really burning. Inside, and the layup is missed by May. And who comes out of there with the rebound? Tom Carmichael. What a job he does under there for his side. He got 12 up against Ohio State Saturday, the leading rebounder. The Illini again with a chance to tie. Otho Tucker, long jumper, is good. And it's a tie ball game, folks. Four minutes to play first half, 26 all. Some kind of job in the first half by this Illinois basketball team. Come out and see them Saturday. Home game against Michigan State. Then Monday night against Minnesota. They need your support. Jumper by May is good. It will count, and Farnham is the fouler. Farnham says, what did I do? Okay, that makes it Indiana 28, Illinois 26. May has 10 points in his ball game, and Gene, it looks like Indiana's going to start shooting over the zone a little more consistently. Yeah, because we've been sagging in pretty deep. We, we're trying to keep that ball away from Benson, and it's a gamble. Trying to make him beat you from the outside. Benson 
misses the rebound. Another rebound is dropped by Illinois, and a foul is called underneath on Tom Carmichael. That's his second on Carmichael. And we've got a timeout by Illinois, 3.38 to play first half. Indiana 28, Illinois 26. Okay, gotcha. Oh. Would you ask Daryl if he heard anything on those mics? It sounded like the mics were cutting in and out about four or five minutes ago. Okay. Yeah, it sounded like they were cutting out here. I thought I had a frog in my throat. Okay. I won't after this game's over. I won't be able to hear a thing. Carmichael now with two personal fouls, and how the Illini got called for that foul before they got one on Indiana, well, I'll tell you, I don't really know. Somebody's going to get a technical on one bench or the other before this game's over because there's an awful lot of talking going on between the benches and the referees. That's Laskowski. He's got two, and Indiana now with that four-point lead again, 30-26, to 26, 3.35 to play in the first half. Otho Tucker and Nate Williams at guard. Mike Washington back in for Illinois. This is Farnham and Schmidt down deep. Carmichael's taking a rest. Otho Tucker travels, and he did. And Coach Bartow says, yes, that's right, I agree with you, and he shakes his head. What can he say? 30 to 26, Indiana now with a chance to go up by six points. Inside, Laskowski, rebound is May, and a Johnny on the spot is Scott May with 12 points, and he is literally bringing the Hoosiers away from the Illini in the last couple, three minutes. 2.59 to play, Indiana 32, Illinois 26. Nate Williams. He's got it. That's and what we got to do, Tom. When they try to double us up, we've got to hit that open man and take the shot. Six points for Williams. Illinois to within four, 32-28. Scott May. Boy, he's hot. He misses Benson. Tips the rebound. It goes out of bounds, and a foul has been called on Indiana. It's on Abernathy. I think that's who they pointed to. Abernathy says, who, me? He was leaning in when he went for the rebound. Audie Matthews into the ball game for the Illini. He replaces Farnham. Tucker will shoot. He makes it. Matthews is going into the ball game for Tucker. Carmichael's back in. He's replaced Farnham. Indiana 32, Illinois 30. Otho comes out to take a rest. Audie Matthews comes in to play guard with Nate Williams. Washington, Carmichael, and Schmidt up front. Wilkerson and Laskowski, the guards. May, Abernathy, and Benson up front for Indiana. Benson. Laskowski. Boy, does he shoot a lot. Indiana 34, Illinois 30. 219 to play first half. Closest anybody's come to Indiana in the Big Ten is 14 points. That was Michigan. Greg Schmidt. Fine defensive effort by Indiana. Oh, they're fast, and they can't be picked up. Schmidt has to shoot from way out there. He'd rather not shoot from that distance. Knocked out of bounds, it'll be Indiana ball. 145 left in the first half. Indiana with a chance to go up by six again. Yeah. 
Wilkerson. Illinois still in the zone. Wilkerson shoots over it, and Rick Schmidt up high for the rebound. 125 left. Halftime feature. Tom Porter, the Illinois wrestling coach, will be visiting with us. Mike Washington has it knocked away. And the foul was called on May. Let's see if that's right. That's right. That's three fouls on May. He's going to take a rest. Quinn Buckner comes in. It doesn't appear, Gene, that Bobby Knight cares where his players play. He just puts in whoever he feels like it, and they play some position on the court. 43 is North coming into the ball game. He must be a crowd favorite. He replaces Benson. The crowd really gave Nort a hand. He must have a lot of relatives. Mike Washington at the line. Mike has 10 points in this ball game, two out of two at the free throw line. He's got his third free throw, and it's 34 31. 118 play in the first half. Lots of people in foul difficulties. Another one by Washington, and Illinois stays to within two. It's 34 32. Quinn Buckner, Wilkerson, inside, Laskowski drop off past the north and he three seconds. the lane. Three seconds. Three we seconds. A, we got a break then, uh, Tom, you notice how they work that ball from the point man to the side into the middle under. They just keep it going, so pretty soon they're going to get somebody loose. Got to have patience. 55 seconds to go first half. Illinois to within two points. Nate has to shoot it. And he and makes puts it in. A tie ball game, 45 seconds to play, 34 all. Good looking effort by Illinois in the first 20 minutes. Indiana looking at the clock, they may go for one shot. 34 seconds. That's what they're going to do. They're going to go for one shot and hope to get the lead at the half. I bet Indiana hadn't been in this situation all season long. 19 seconds now. Buckner's in control. Wilkerson will not shoot it. Ten seconds. We're down to seven. Buckner on a long jumper. And that's the end of the half, and it counts. Quinn Buckner on the rebound basket. Well, the Illini played well in the first half, I'll tell you. At the end of the half, it's Indiana 36, Illinois 34. We'll take a look at the scoring in just a few moments. Okay. This is the way the scoring went in the first half. First for Indiana with 36 points, averaging over 90 a game. Scott May, who came on strong with some scoring in the last eight minutes of the first half, is their leading point producer with 12, having six baskets. Buckner had seven. Laskowski with six. Benson with six. Wilkerson had five. That's it. Five men scored for Indiana. Green, North, and Abernathy did not score. For Illinois, Mike Washington starting only his third game of the year with four baskets and four free throws with 12 points is the leading score for the Illini. 
And Nate Williams, the other junior college transfer with four jumpers from the side, has eight points. Rick Schmidt has six. Carmichael, four. Tucker, four. Johnson, Matthews, and Parnham all played. They did not score. Well, Gene, I don't know what the, ha- the score at the half was in the ball games with Indiana last year. But here, Indiana beat Illinois 107-67. And it seems like last year at the half, we were about ready to pack up our TV gear and go home because it was so frustrating. And at, Il- at Illinois last year, Indiana won 101-83. Now, made a shoot from outside. Laskowski, uh, who was a, who's a super sub, is what they call him, or do call him. Of course, he can hit from the outside. We've been forcing it. And then uh, Tommy Carmichael somehow comes out of there with the rebound time after time. Uh, we've kept our turnovers to a minimum. Uh, what we're going to have to be careful, particularly in the second half, is start to look for the open man when they try to double team us. Uh, we got away and got a basket one time uh, because they're always covering with 18 straight victories and Illinois pushing them right up against the wall. It's Indiana 36, Illinois 34. And some very interesting halftime statistics have just been handed to us. If you had to guess what Illinois shot from the field in the first half, what would it be? Well, if you guessed 65%, you're right on it. Illinois took only 20 shots in the first half, hit 13, 65%, 8 out of 10 from the free throw line. Indiana, with Illinois shooting 20 times, took 38 shots, almost twice as many, and hit 15, two more field goals for a 39%, almost 40% average. Indiana, 6 of 11 from the free throw line, and in rebounds, Illinois trailing Indiana, but not by much. The Hoosiers, 17 to 14, leading in rebounds. And Gene, you talked about the effort that Tom Carmichael was doing. Out of the 14 Illinois rebounds in the first half, Tom Carmichael is credited with nine of those. Well, that's right, Tom. Uh, of course, uh, as you say, you know, the amazing thing here is our shooting. I thought we were shooting pretty well because we most of our shots were inside and, and we weren't forcing them. This is the thing that, that we've got to be careful of. We don't come down and we get desperate, we start throwing the ball up, we've taken our time. Uh, I was amazed we had made 12 turnovers. I didn't quite think we'd made that many, but uh, we can cut those down. I'm sure that uh, Indiana's gonna be fired up <laughs> after coming out of the, the locker room with the, with the talk by Bobby Knight. They, so, they say that Indiana has asbestos on its, <laughs> on its walls of its dressing room, and I suspect they probably need it. There's Bobby Knight, his tie's loose. Uh, he kicked the clock equipment shortly before the end of the first half and almost knocked it off the table. He was very mad at an Illinois assistant coach just after a timeout because he didn't like the coach looking in on his huddle. And now he's coming down. Bobby Knight is going to talk to Tony Yates about it. And they shake hands. He says, out of the heat of battle, maybe I said some things I shouldn't, but stop looking in my huddle. He's right in front of our broadcasting position. In the foul situation, Indiana has two players with three fouls, Green and May. Benson has two. Wilkerson has one. Buckner one. And Abernathy one. For Illinois, nobody with more than two personals. Schmidt has two. Washington two. Carmichael two. Tucker two. Williams two. Johnson one. And Farnham one. The closest, as we mentioned in that first half, the closest anybody's come to Indiana in the Big Ten this year is Michigan. Indiana beat the Wolverines 90-76. to Their closest game of the year was an overtime victory over Kansas, 74-70 in the second game of the year. Notre Dame held them to a 10-point victory. Nobody else has come closer than 14. Okay. 20 minutes of basketball left with the top-ranked Hoosiers of Indiana and a fight in the lineup. Indiana in control. See who they're going to start. They got Buckner and May, Laskowski, Abernathy, and Benson. Illinois, Tucker and Williams, Carmichael, Washington, and Schmidt. Inside, Laskowski misses. Benson tips, and May's got an easy one. He missed it. You won't see him miss too many of those. And a foul is called underneath on Mike Washington. Well, the foul situation didn't hurt the Illini as much as you thought it might in the first half. They picked up some quick ones and then didn't get too many the second part of the first half. On Washington, that's his third, and he's the leading Illinois scorer with 12 points, because so he can't afford to pick up another one. Scott May. 
Rebound Carmichael. He has 10. May hit 6 out of 11, and that's spurred in the first half. He's a hot shooter. The Illini now with a chance to tie. Oh. Oh. Illinois ball. I think Bob almost tied up for the five. Nate Williams happy. And they say it's Indiana ball. I didn't see that one. Well, the Hoosiers now with that still two-point lead. We played a minute in the second half. Scott May fakes his shot. Buckner will take it. Indiana 38, Illinois 34 on the basket by Buckner. Quinn has nine points. Nate Williams, too many tall trees. Couldn't shoot. Buckner takes it out of the air. He'll shoot. Scott May rebounds, and it may be on Mike Washington. No, it's on Tom Carmichael. <laughs> Three fouls on Carmichael, so just like that, the Illini have two players in foul trouble. Washington and Carmichael each with three. At the line, this will be a shooting foul. That's the second team foul on Illinois this half. May hacked in the act of shooting. This is his first. He's been at the line twice tonight, missed them both. May is an 81% free throw shooter. And he's only one out of three in this game. 39-34, Indiana by five, and the Illini need a basket in the worst way. We gotta move, Tom. Uh, they'll get us to stand around. Rick Schmidt, great defensive play. Tries to get it inside to Carmichael. Knocked away by Abernathy. And an offensive foul. Yes, sir. Laskowski put his arm out and literally tried to put Otho Tucker in the first row of seats. And Bobby Knight's out on the floor saying, I don't agree with that. And why don't they call a technical on him? I don't understand that. That's the rule. The coaches put it in. And they said, anytime we come off the bench and we say something to the official, we should get a technical. Washington moving on the big guy nicely, but can't get it in. Carmichael. Yes, sir. He fouled Buckner. And that's the fourth foul on Carmichael. That's too bad, but it was a pretty obvious foul. Bill Rux is going to come in the ball game to replace Carmichael. Well, Tom, we got to be careful right now that they don't just really blitz us real quick. we still got to keep our composure. The Illini, the Illini have been in that zone the whole game. They've effectively slowed the pace down. Scott May will shoot. Scott May has 15 points, and just like that, Indiana with its biggest lead, 41-34. 17-23 left to play. The Illini have yet to score in the second half. Nice, soft touch by Otho Tucker. Otho, six points in the ball game. It's 41-36 Indiana. Scott May. And Carmichael rebound. Carmichael has 11 rebounds in this ball game. Oh, how Nate Williams did that, I don't know. A super play by Nate Williams. I tell you, I don't know how he made it either, Tom. 41 to 38, and the Illini come back from a seven point deficit, and they've cut it to three. Williams has 10 in this ball game. Three-second violation. Another three-second violation on Indiana. And Bobby Knight's off the bench talking to the official again. Still like to know why they don't call a technical on that. That's supposed to be the rule. 41 to 38, 16.08 to play.
Tucker driving on Laskowski. We've got to move. Ah, the interception by Abernathy. Williams will try to block it. Comes out of there. Buckner puts it back up, and Mike Washington has picked up his fourth personal foul. That's too bad. They blew the layup. The Illini couldn't control the rebound. And in the fray underneath, Washington, who is the leading scorer in the ballgame for the Illini, picks up his fourth personal. So, Carmichael sitting on the bench with four, the leading rebounder in this game with 11. Washington sitting on the bench with four, the leading scorer in this game for Illinois with 12. So when you take your leading scorer and your leading rebounder out, you really got a hump to make things work. Quinn Buckner misses. 15.45 to play in the ball game, and Indiana leads by three. Buckner misses again, and May gets that rebound. My goodness. Another tip, another tip, and Benson gets it in. Otho Tucker wanted to know why they didn't call something about touching the ball on the rim. That was the question. 43-38. Benson has eight. There's another one by Washington, or by uh, Nate Williams. I tell you, that's just, that was a super move. Nate Williams coming into his own the last couple of games out of his shooting slump. It's 43-40, Indiana. Benson, has it, that's Abernathy inside, and steps are called. Abernathy is 33, Benson's 54. They're playing the post. Bobby Nice off the bench again. Otho Tucker and the official are having a private joke. They're laughing about the whole thing. I'm not sure there's anything to laugh about right now. This is very serious. Rick Schmidt, too far out. Big Benson comes off with it unmolested. Rich Adams in the ballgame for Illinois. Timeout for Indiana with 14.53 to play. Indiana 43, Illinois 40. He won't come to talk to Illinois trailing by three points. The Illinois lineup now finds Tucker and Williams at the guards. Rux at center with Adams and Schmidt at forward. May, Buckner, Laskowski, Abernathy, and Benson for Indiana. This is Laskowski. He only hit two out of eight in the first half. That's his first basket of the second half. Laskowski has eight points. Rick Schmidt really got boxed in, and Quinn Buckner commits the foul. 14 minutes, 30 seconds to play for Buckner. That is foul number two. Two Illinois players on the bench with four, Carmichael and Washington. No Indiana player with more than three. Green has three, and he hadn't played in the second half. May has three. Now we're wiping up a little wet spot on the floor. And the crowd gives the official a hand for the job well done. Indiana by five points. The Illini on the attack. Tough spot for a freshman like Adams. But he's in there battling Abernathy inside. They're, they're looking to get it inside. It's knocked away. And Indiana on the move. Now the Illini are going to have to stop stuff like that.
looping pass, and Benson can't hold on to it. It's out of bounds. They better work on that play a little more. They fouled it up two or three times tonight. 17,581, that's the official attendance. About 1,000 standees, I think. Knocked away again by Buckner. The Illini now two times down the floor, and it's stolen away before they even got the shot. 13.40 left to play. 45-40, Indiana knocked away by Illinois, picked up by Buckner, and he sticks it in. Quick move by Quinn Buckner on the loose basketball and the free basket. Indiana by seven. That's their biggest margin. They had that once before. The Illini came back at that point with two quick baskets. Let's see if they can do that same thing. Tucker driving. Takes a jumper, but it misses everything. Adams rebounds. Adams rebounds and give him a basket. No, I think that was Williams. Nate Williams. Oh, was it Nate? Okay. Looks like Adams from my spot, but you're closer to it, Coach, so we'll give it to Williams. And Rux comes out, and Washington comes back in. Adams comes out, and Audie Matthews comes in for Illinois. Well, he will as soon as the uh, ball stops play the next time. <laughs> Scott May, 49-42. Well, Tom, they've, uh, I tell you, they've improved their shooting this half a little bit. Uh, both May and Laskowski, and, and almost throw it away. Williams recovers it. Buckner's got him trapped, but he gets it out. Rick Schmidt has it knocked away by Scott May. And three out of the last four times down now, the Illini have had the ball taken away within 15 feet of their own basket. Now, that's not the way to play the game. But that's the way Indiana plays, and they're good at it. Laskowski and Indiana now opening up some daylight for the first time tonight. 12 minutes and 19 seconds left. Indiana with their biggest lead, 51 to 42. And here comes the crowd. I think he got fouled. Yeah, he did by Abernathy. And I don't know whether they'll count the basket or not. No. <laughs> Jerry Johnson, our statistician, looks at the official and says, let's count it. And the official looks back at Jerry and says, no, we're not. I don't know. Why was he telling you that? <laughs> so don't give him the basket. It'll be Illinois ball. That's only the third team foul on Indiana. 14 fouls on Illinois this half, so a little less fouling. Laskowski holds Matthews as he drives. Fourth team foul on Laskowski. That's his second foul of the game. The Illini need a basket in the worst way right now. They can't afford to get down by more than nine. We have just under 12 minutes to play. Well, you got to feel sorry for Rick Schmidt. He just hadn't had an open spot all night. Carmichael gets banged into. Nothing's called. Schmidt finally gets an opening. And, and he gets it in. in. That's the way, Rick. Eight points for Schmidt in his ballgame. He only had four shots in the first half. Benson's going to the hoop. And he got hit. I think it's on Carmichael. And if it is, he's gone. I guess he thinks it's on him, too, because he's coming this way. Tom Carmichael fouls out of the ball game with another very fine effort. He only scored four points, but unofficially, he had 12 rebounds. There's Gene Bartow thinking it over, trying to decide who's supposed to come in, and it's going to be the freshman, Rich Adams. Williams is now the leading point producer for the Illini. He has 14. Washington has 12, but hadn't scored in the second half. Benson at the line with two shots and a chance to put Indiana up by nine again. Benson is a 74% free throw shooter on the season. That's thinking in all of Indiana's 18 ball games. Benson now has 10 points in the ball game, four for four at the line. Indiana 53, Illinois 44. 
11.20 left. Mike Washington, short, rebound, fought for, taken out of there by Schmidt. Schmidt driving on May, makes a nice move, can't get in. Audie Matthews, and two Indiana Giants under there. Benson and Abernathy, and Benson gets it, and the crowd likes it. Scott May travels. So take the basket away from a red-hot shooting Scott May. Indiana still leading by the nine points. Audie Matthews and Nate Williams. Adams, Washington, and Schmidt up front for Illinois. Bobby Knight's pretty much gone with his lineup the whole second half. Tipped out by Schmidt, and he has called for the foul, and he almost threw the ball down too hard. That's the third foul on Schmidt. And that is the fifth team foul on the Illini. Ten thirty-three left. Indiana now with a chance to go up by eleven. Scott May. Nineteen points for Scott May. Indiana by 11, 55-44. Got to do something about Scott May. Buckner bounces into Williams. Nothing's called. Ball knocked away, and Buckner's got it. Williams hits the deck. Fast break. Laskowski. Uh, Indiana's starting to move now. Look out. 57-44, 13-point lead, 9.48 left. And something's called away from play. Well, they called. Uh, it's on Scott May. And Bobby Knight it comes right over in front of the scorer's bench to tell the official he doesn't like that. On May, that's four personals. I guess about the best thing we could do with him would be file him out of the game. He's got 19 points, and he is really shooting up scores. Well, they made a defensive assignment now. They move Abernathy on to Rick Smith, and they put May on uh, Rich Adams uh, with the four-foul situation. Got to move. See, this is what happens, Tom. They get us down that corner, and we're standing around. They get the jump ball situation. Just got to move on that offense. So Nate Williams will jump here against Quinn Buckner. Williams has a couple inches in height, and he gets the tip. Adams got it. Rick Schmidt, I tell you, he's been laid all over by that Abernathy. And I think they finally called a foul on Abernathy. Yeah. And I tell you, he's a big man to lean on him, too. No basket. Do not count the basket. Three fouls on Abernathy. Indiana's dividing up their fouls pretty good. Only one man with four. That's May. That's a six-team foul. Adams got it off to Schmidt. He's moving on Abernathy again. Audie Matthews helping out. 9-12 left in the ball game. The Illini trail by 13. Still being cautious. Audie's moving. Adams rebounds. He really got banged into by Abernathy. who knocked it out of bounds. And Gene Barto wants to know why something wasn't called there. That Abernathy, I'm telling you, he's a physical guy. Well, they all are, Tom. I tell you, they've got not only tall, but they're big uh, along with it. It's moving again. Makes a move. And has the ball taken away. Schmidt comes out of there with it. Knocked away by Buckner. And finally gets it in. Rick Schmidt has 10 points. 57-46, Indiana. 8.40 left. Benson shoved by Adams, no shot. Adams is called for the personal. First foul on Adams, 16 foul on the Illini. Coach Barto wants a timeout, so 8.32 left in the game. Timeout, Indiana 57, 
Illinois 46. and 32 seconds left from the Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, where a crowd of 17,581 enjoying a Rip Snorton basketball game. And yeah. Tom, Tom, this has been a good ball game. I tell you, I think right now, physically, it's starting to tell on the line after that game Saturday night because they've got Rich Adams in there who's physically, he's just not strong enough to stand the weight that Benson's going to put on him. And here you got Abernathy in there against Audie Matthews, and it makes it tough right now. Benson has one more. Benson has 11. Buckner has 11. Laskowski has 12. May has 19. Good balance for the Hoosiers. 59-46, 13-point advantage. Here we go. Line I need a basket. Schmidt, Adams, Washington in the middle with Matthews and Williams outside. And Bobby Knight, who usually substitutes a whole bushel basketball, is keeping most of that lineup in the second half. Nice feed oh, on that basket by Washington. I tell you, Rick really attracted a crowd then and made a beautiful pass off to Mike Washington. 14 points for Washington. 59-48, Indiana. Scott May, short, gets his own rebound. And an offensive, offensive foul, foul, and he's out of the game. game. Scott May is just fouled out of the game with seven minutes and 50 seconds to play. And Bobby Knight is going to tell the official about it. He's got to get it technical. Why doesn't he get it technical? Technical, technical. What's his explanation? He just explained something to Gene Barto. I couldn't hear what he said. Well, I don't know. He started to call it, and he backed off. That's exactly what uh, Coach Leroy Hunt just said to Coach Barto. He started to call it, and he backed off. Shot in the air is good I tell by you, Williams. The moves he has, and he's had to make them, Tom, because every time there's Benson standing in front of him. 16 for Williams, Indiana 59 to 50. Inside to Benson, and a jump ball is called. Okay, while we wait for this jump ball, let's pause. Take a breath here. Five seconds for station identification. Seven twenty-two left to play. Benson jumping against Schmidt. And Rick actually touched the ball, I think, but Abernathy controls it. Quinn Buckner bumps in and backs off and takes a shot and makes it. Quinn Buckner's all right. He's a good basketball player. 61 to 50, Indiana by 11. And Audie Matthews can't find anybody to pass it to. Finally, Williams breaks away from the pack. Really, right now, Tom, we're using pretty much a one-guard offense. Uh, they're trying to work uh, Rick or, or Nate Williams down in there. Six forty-four left. Rick Schmidt. Washington on a tip, another tip, and it's finally controlled by Abernathy. They line I hustling on the board, but they just couldn't get it in. Indiana wants timeout. Six thirty-two left. Indiana sixty-one. Illinois fifty. You know what he's going to do now. 
He's going to bring us out of that zone. He's going to stand out there and play catch with it. Yeah, conceivably, he could get uh, he could get a little questions right now because he's got an 11-point lead. And I tell you, of course, we're in foul trouble. Uh, they're in the, uh, in the bonus situation, too. I tell you, this crowd has come alive because here there's still six minutes, 32 seconds to go. And uh, we're down by 11. But I tell you, these kids have just, they've really played hard tonight. We're not on the air, you know. Oh. <laughs> well, if we were... Indiana leading by 11. Now, Bobby Knight, we guessed, called that timeout to tell his team to play a little pitch and catch with that ball if Illinois persists in the zone. Because with only six minutes and 32 seconds left and trailing by 11, Indiana would like to get Illinois out of that zone so they could play him up tight man on man. And that's what they're going to do. And, well, we guessed right. Got to move it in within five seconds. No, all they, they can stand out there and play catch like that, Tom. Not if they're closely guarded. Well, of course, then the enemy comes to the official's judgment. Now, Illinois has got to come out after them. They've been warned by the officials, because, and this is right, because Illinois is behind, and, and we've got to commit the action now. We've got to make a reasonable attempt to guard them. But the Illini still don't want to come out of that zone. 5.50 to play, and they got to come out of the zone. They don't have any choice. They'll lose by this same score, and Indiana stalled out the last five and a half minutes. Now they say go back. The Illini coaches tell them, no, don't come out of that zone. Otho Tucker about ready to report back in. Brad Farnham is getting ready to come in for Illinois, and the crowd to with their staccato applause, five minutes and uh, 15 seconds left. Illinois trailing by 11, they won't come out of the zone. Illinois with only one timeout left in the game and Coach Bartro says stay back, don't come out of the zone. Well, I guess he knows something I don't, because if I were the coach, I'd tell him to come out of the zone. Let's just watch this, because the crowd is uh, enjoying clapping its hands right now. And the referee has warned them, and they call a technical on Illinois. Because they warned Illinois to come out, the defense, and Illinois would not do it. And now... Carol Cosby, the official, is explaining to Gene Bartow the reason he called the technical. And Gene Bartow says, uh, explain that again. Run well, that by me. Tom, here's where, here's where you get into a judgment situation. Uh, and the official evidently has determined that Illinois was not active enough in guarding. He had, he had previously warned them, so he calls a technical. This is, this is a tough call. I tell you, this is the first time I've seen it in a long time. The shot, the technical by Laskowski is good. That gives Indiana now a 12-point lead, and they'll still have the ball. 4.37 left. Now, Coach Barto in a discussion along with Tony Yates and uh, Leroy Hunt, his two assistants. Carol Cosby is the official who has a very little amount of hair on top of his head, and... Ken Kulik is the other official. Illinois is going to take its last timeout. So with timeout, 4.37 to go. The score, Indiana 62, Illinois 50. Are we off? Yeah. He, he's got to come out of that zone now, I guess. Yeah, he, he will. He was trying to get him to come out, and they didn't see him. And he stayed in at two minutes too long. Well... Now the thing is, at this stage, if we come out and start gambling, all they got to do is hit Vince, he's going to stand there and lay him in all night. So it's a gamble either way. He's trying to run the clock down, and they might make a mistake, throw it away, get Carol or something.
good part of that timeout period was spent with the officials explaining to a couple of the Illinois coaches why they call that technical. And the Illinois coaches nodded. They understood. There's not much they could do about it, even if they didn't. Illinois now out of the zone. See, what well, we got to be careful now. We don't give them the cheapies. We're going to have to foul, too. 4.25 left, and Indiana leading by 12, and they won't take anything but the good shot. Well, we may not win this game, but I tell you, you've got to give every one of these Illinois ball players a gigantic pat on the back. They have hustled, they have played hard, they have rebounded. Parham almost made the steal, he knocked it away, and he got Wilkerson on the wrist. Now, Illinois will come home this Saturday to play Michigan State in the Assembly Hall. Then they'll be playing Minnesota Monday night. And I certainly hope you'll be out there to watch because uh, it would sure be a whole lot better with about a 12 to 14,000 crowd in that assembly hall and six or seven like we have been having. And I'm sure the team would appreciate it. Wilkerson misses a free throw and Farnham gets the rebound. Now we've got four minutes left. Nate Williams has it knocked out of bounds by the quick hands of Quinn Buckner. Illinois has scored just 16 points in the second half. 354 left. Otho's got to shoot it. And Otho makes it. It's 62-52. Now the Illini with some downcourt pressure. Farnham and Williams. Buckner drives past Nate. And Nate reaches over and fouls Quinn. So Williams has three, both teams in the one in bonus. And now the free throws will start to tell. Quinn Buckner is a, not a very good free throw shooter, only 54%, but when the clutch time comes, he's usually pretty good. Sixty-three, fifty-two. 64-52, and Buckner, who had been at the line four times and missed them all tonight, finally makes a couple. Indiana trying for its 19th straight. Rick Schmidt got to put it up. And Benson gets the rebound, and Farnham had him surrounded. 64-52, 320 left. Buckner goes all the way, and they take it away from him. They take it away from him. And now they're going to call a technical on Bobby Knight. And Bobby Knight says, what did I say? I think that's for all the technicals they should have been calling on him earlier. Now we got a little discussion going on here between the officials and Bobby Knight. Bobby says, I'm a good guy. You shouldn't have done that to me. I'm going to complain about you. Crowd doesn't like it. I guess they could call two technicals on him if they wanted to. They're really having a debate. They're saying things to each other, Gene. They'll be sorry for it tomorrow. But they're really talking to each other. And Bobby's still not through. Rich Smith will shoot the technical. I didn't have to tell you that. Indiana by 12 with almost, well, just a little over three minutes to play. Eight with a good stutter step, but he didn't have anybody to pass it to, and he commits a foul. Four fouls on Williams. Carmichael's already gone. He fouled out with 11.26 to play. Washington has four. Otho Tucker. Weakened by the flu and playing with a broken nose. Talking to Coach Bartow, trying to find something that'll score some quick points for the Illini. Buckner will be at the line with a one in bonus. Indiana 64, Illinois 52, 302 left. Abernathy's basket is good, 
and he was fouled by Farnham underneath. So it's now a 14 point advantage. That's the biggest lead of the night for the Hoosiers with 2.59 left. Brad Farnham has his third foul. He hadn't played very much. Abernathy makes it. He's got three points in the game. It's now 67-52. Crowd wanted a traveling call. Buckner knocks it away, flies through the air, and almost saves it. Audie Matthews into the lineup replacing Brad Farnham for Illinois. Illinois ball, 2.52 left. Buckner, a foul, he bangs into Williams. That for Buckner is his third. Hey, Tom, there's been a lot of fouls. There's been a lot of contact out there. Even, even with Illinois playing that zone defense, there's still been a little action. Nate Williams, 16 points. All on baskets. 17 for Williams. And this is about as, most, as many points as he's ever scored for the Illini. Wilkerson on the rebound. They're going to spread us out now, and it's tough. we got to foul him. Rick Schmidt leaning over, fouls Buckner. For Schmidt, that's his fourth. Well, what they're trying to do now offensively, as far as Indiana goes, Tom, they're going to spread us out and just play keep away with them. Indiana by 14, 67-53. Quinn Buckner at the line with the one and bonus. Buckner with 15 points. Tapped away by Abernathy. Indiana getting tough on the boards, and they have been since Tommy Carmichael went out with fouls after getting a game-high 12 rebounds at that point. Two thirteen left. Indiana is... Uh, playing keep away right now with a 14 point lead and not many worries. Foul on Audie Matthews. So this will be a long two minutes folks. 207 left. At the line is Wilkerson. He has five points and hadn't scored in the second half. Wilkerson steals it. And Quinn Buckner gets the bucket. 69 to 53. And the top ranked Hoosiers, even though leading only by two at the half, have come on here in the final 20. Mike Washington. Mike Washington has played a heck of a basketball game. 16 points. And he's played almost the whole second half with four fouls. Now Bobby Knight's going to put in the kitty core even though he only had one senior in the starting lineup. 1.22 left to play, and Indiana with a 14-point lead. Wilkerson, unmolested. 71-55. Tucker to Washington. The jumper is short. Abernathy on the rebound. One minute left. I don't know if these subs will get in, but I hope they do because they're taking up a lot of room at the scorer's table. we got nine of them up here. Illinois can't call a timeout. They don't have any left. You'd think Bobby Knight would call a timeout if he really wanted to get these five guys in there. Laskowski, 73-55 with 35 seconds left. May as well take it, Rick. Inside, Washington. 
big hand of Benson prevents him, and now Wilkerson has to beat Williams. He won't even try. Slips it off to Abernathy, and he's fouled by Tucker. 16 seconds, and here come the shock proof. Well, I'll tell you, Tom, I, I'm real proud of Illinois. They, they puzzled all the way. It, it's just, uh, I tell you, this, this Indiana team is physically is strong. Um, it took them a while to put it together, and uh, we hung in there, though, with them all the way. And unfortunately, the score is really not indicative of the true game it's been. Indiana led 36-34 at the half. The free throw is missed. The rebound is missed. And a foul is called on Adams underneath. Indiana with that two-point lead at the half, and the Illini have only been able to score 21 points in the second half. Our next telecast for you on this network of stations for Illinois will be February 10th at Wisconsin. That game will start at 7.30. The Illini and Michigan State at the Assembly Hall Saturday, and the Illini in Minnesota at home in Champaign next Monday. This is Rick Leasty. He's in there with Johnson and Adams and Audie Matthews who's shooting and making. Audie Matthews, 73-57, that's gonna be it. So that's your final score. The Illini with a great effort, but not quite enough to defeat the top-ranked Hoosiers. The final from Bloomington, Indiana. The Hoosiers 73, the Illini 57. We'll take a look at the scoring and recap tonight's game in just a few moments. 